Hey guys, it's Nick. Welcome to another episode of Team Minus 365. Today's episode, I'm going to be covering all the updates from Microsoft in December of 2021. If you've watched my update videos in the past, you know I focus in on all the announcements relevant to the MSP space, block out all the noise from the 100 or so announcements that come out from Microsoft each month. Before I get into today's session, if you do want to see more content around Microsoft and the MSP space, be sure to subscribe. Getting to it here though, I'm going to start off with Microsoft Teams. There's just a couple of announcements here. The first one here, you're able to configure your activity feed notifications on a more granular level. If you're like me, you have a lot of Teams channel activity, as well as some annoyances from people reacting to certain comments and things of that nature. So they're just giving you more granular ability to suppress those types of alerts and notifications from those Teams channels in your activity feed overall. This will be happening in mid-January. Next one here, automatically detect music. Microsoft has had this feature out for a while now, which is to say that you can fork the ability to suppress background noise versus having high fidelity music come through. With this feature ad, they're giving the user the ability to select if they detect that, to say, hey, we detected this music, do you want us to suppress that, or is this something that you actually want to come through on the video? So this will be happening in early January and be complete by mid-February. Last one here for Teams, pretty straightforward. They're giving you the ability to pin your video on your Teams meeting. So just as you see in these screenshots here, pinning the video opens it up here on the left-hand side and then gives you a little bit more real estate to see yourself as well too. This will be happening in early January and be complete by early February. Next, shifting into SharePoint here, we have a couple of announcements. The first one here, they are shifting some of the management capabilities for Teams channels into the SharePoint Admin Center. Previously, this was only accessible either through PowerShell or the Teams Admin Center, but as you can see in this screenshot here, they're giving you the ability to see these channel sites that are connected to Microsoft Teams channels. You can click into that and nest a little bit deeper to manage those sites and see a little more information about them. You may have already started to see this within your tenant as it started rolling out in early December, but it will be complete by late January. Next, the only other announcement here for SharePoint is the use of Azure Active Directory dynamic groups for searching and audience targeting within SharePoint sites. So previously, you were only able to use the M365 groups or the security groups to target for audiences that you want to be part of these sites. Now you can search for dynamic groups as well, and that is already GA. Last section here is part of the Microsoft Admin. So first one here is part of the partner program and your delegated admin relationships that you have with your customers, delegated admin privileges or DAP relationships as they're known. They're giving you dashboard reporting functionality here within Partner Center so that you can detect any type of stale activity you have with customer environments. And that is to say that you don't access them through your DAP relationship. They show you the number of partner agents that are signing into these tenants, and that is the metric that determines if that account is stale. And they give you the ability to remove your DAP relationship straight from this dashboard as well too. This is available now if you go into Partner Center under the Account Settings section, and then there's the Security Center that's in a preview mode, and Administrative Relationships actually is what it's called. I'll link down below here in my blog post that I'll have on these updates as well too. But essentially, overall, this is leading directly into GDAP relationships and Microsoft's goals of reducing supply chain attacks through granular delegated access rights that you have within the customers that you manage. So I mentioned this last month in my update as well, and I created a blog post on GDAP, but it will be replacing these existing relationships that you have with your customers today. And essentially, it gives you a granular ability for a model of least privilege into these tenants versus global admin rights across the board. It's also time bound so that you have to periodically review these relationships at a minimum of every two years versus indefinitely having that relationship with the customer. So this will be available from a technical release standpoint early January where you can go in and start establishing these types of relationships within Partner Center and I'll be doing a video specifically on that because it's going to be a big change from what you used to today. Last one here is another security enhancement. They're introducing support for Dane and DNS Tech into Exchange Online. If you're not familiar with those terms, go look them up. Definitely great security enhancements to have within your Exchange environment. Um, and Microsoft will be rolling this out in a longer term phase starting in January and concluding around the May 2022 timeframe as far as right now goes. So that's all the announcements that I want to cover for today. I just wanted to take a brief moment and thank you all for your support in 2021. It was really a great year and I got a lot of great feedback from the community around the site and the blog as well too, so I really appreciate that. 
Looking forward to another great year in 2022, and I wish you guys all a happy new year. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.